Tremolo is the name of the audio effect that's created by using amplitude modulation. Now there are some old vintage guitar amplifiers that have this effect, but call it something different. On the amplifiers, it's labeled as vibrato, but now we use the term vibrato to mean a different type of audio effect. Anyway, with Tremolo, the way that the processing works is we have an input signal or a carrier signal, and we're going to multiply by our LFO or our modulator. This could be a sine wave, triangle wave, square wave, and so on. There are also a few important controls and parameters of a tremolo effect. It's very common that the engineer has the ability to change the frequency of the tremolo effect. This is by changing and modifying the LFO. Another important characteristic is called the depth control or the intensity control. This is going to change our perception of the strength of the effect. This is another case we're going to modify the LFO by changing its amplitude. First, let's have a look at using the tremolo effect, and then we'll get into how we can write the computer code to create the tremolo effect. Here in my digital audio workstation, I'm going to demonstrate the tremolo effect. For my input carrier signal, I'll be using white noise. It sounds like this. Now what I'll do is take this signal and send it through my tremolo plugin. This is one from Sound Toys called the Tremolator. It sounds like this. There are a few basic controls on the tremolo effect. One is the rate knob. This is going to control the speed of the effect. Another knob over here is for the depth. This is the intensity or strength of the effect. Then in this plugin, we have a drop down menu to select the different types of LFOs. Right now I have it set on square, but we also have several other options. To help us visualize what this effect is doing, what I'm going to do is print this signal from one audio track onto another one so we can see and also hear exactly what's taking place. So we can see that when I print the effect through the plugin, the resulting output signal here is turning on and off. There are portions of the signal where our square wave LFO is changing the amplitude to zero. Let me use some of these controls and show you what they're going to do. If I back off this rate knob, watch the effect on the output signal. Now the duration of time for each cycle of our LFO is changing. Next, let me show you the depth control. Right now I have it set on the maximum amount. I can back this off and look at what we end up with down here. In this case, we're not turning the amplitude all the way off and down to zero. Can back it off even further. And finally, I'll modify our LFO type. Instead of being a square wave, let's also look at a sine wave. Here's the maximum depth. Let me also back off the depth. So those are the basic controls of a tremolo effect. Next, let's use MATLAB to create our own. Here I'm gonna demonstrate how to create the tremolo audio effect. We'll write our code in such a way to have parameters that are commonly found on the effect, including the speed or rate, which is set by the frequency of the LFO, as well as the depth or intensity, which is set by the amplitude of the LFO. To begin with, I'm reusing some of the code that I created previously for amplitude modulation. Beginning of the script, we read in an acoustic guitar recording to use as our input or carrier signal. Then we go through several steps to synthesize our LFO. We want this sine wave to have the exact same length, the same number of samples as our input signal. So we create a time vector, which has units of seconds. Here, we set the frequency of our LFO, and this is where we actually synthesize the sine wave. But we need to do a couple things. Sine wave by itself has a range from minus one to plus one in amplitude. So what do we do? 
we scale the amplitude by a half and then also perform a DC offset to shift it up. That way our LFO has a range that goes from one down to zero. Then we perform element wise or point wise multiplication of the two signals. Last two steps are to plot the signals for comparison and listen to the output. So we can run the script and see how it's working so far. Now what we can do is add some more lines of code to actually implement more of a conventional style tremolo effect. Here initially, I'm going to switch off. Instead of using an acoustic guitar recording, I'm gonna use a different kind of test signal. Here we'll use white noise because it helps us visualize what's going on. Say our input, carrier signal is white noise. Couple commands here to synthesize this noise. Say that our sampling rate is 44,100 samples per second. Then we're going to say, how many samples do we actually want to include? Well, this is gonna be based on our sampling rate. So we'll say number of samples for this signal is equal to our sampling rate times some number of seconds. Why don't we pick three seconds? Three seconds of noise. Now we can actually synthesize our input signal. We're gonna start out by using this rand end function to generate random numbers. This is going to create an array. We want to say that it has this many number of rows and then also one column. The last thing to put in here is we'll scale the amplitude so that it's gonna fit within this range of minus one to plus one so that we're not clipping the signal. 0 0.2 times random, that should be great. Then we'll come down here and we can see that we already have a variable in place for the frequency. This variable here, f, is actually corresponds to the speed or rate parameter. So instead of just putting it in as three hertz, why don't we call this the speed or rate? And this commonly has a range that goes from 0 0.1 up to about 10 hertz. So now we can experiment with different values here for this frequency. Instead of three, why don't we try out eight? You should be able to run the script and see and hear the change that we've implemented. So that's great. The next step then is to add in our, some lines of code that have to do with this depth or intensity. So here, I'm going to come down, put in a few lines of code. We'll call this our depth or intensity control. On many pedals, guitar pedals that have tremolo or also uh, plugins or even on guitar amplifiers, we'll have different ranges for these values. Let's say that it's going to go as a percentage here from 0% all the way up to 100%. Here as the percentage, when it's at 100%, that's the maximum. When it's at 0%, that's when we don't want any of the effect to be happening. So if this is on a guitar amplifier, it would be maybe zero up to 10. Really, depending on whatever kind of effect you're using, you can do a similar kind of transformation that we're gonna perform next. So here, let's set our depth to initially to be equal to 100%. So again, this is going to be based on a unit of percent. So what we need to do is interpret or transform the value of this depth that we can use down here for our LFO. Well, when we have a depth of 100, that's the maximum amplitude we want for our LFO. If the depth is less than 100, then we want this amplitude to be actually smaller. So here, the way this works is we're gonna put in amplitude is equal to whatever our depth control is divided by 200. Now let's think about this. When the value is equal to 100, a will be 0 0.5, that's exactly what we want. If the depth is 50, 50 divided by 200 will be 0 0.25. So that means our LFO is smaller. So we can switch this parameter now to be A. So transform depth 
to amplitude of LFO. So that should be good. But what I'm going to do is actually switch over instead of plotting the waveform, let's comment out a few of these lines of code and let's figure out what our LFO is going to look like now. So here, we're going to plot LFO. Let's run the script and look at what we've got so far. So as of right now, our LFO goes from zero up to one, and that's great. You have an offset of 0 0.5, but let's see what happens if we put in a different value for the depth. Instead of 100, let's switch it to 50. Now in this case, the LFO has a range from 0 0.25 up to 0 0.75. Our DC offset is still 0 0.5. Now this is a case where by as a convention with this effect, we want the maximum of our LFO to always be reaching up to a value of one. When it's a value of one, that means that the signal is passing through at that point. We don't want it to also just decrease it by some amount, in this case, always be scaling the peaks by 0 0.75. So what we're going to do is also figure out what our offset needs to be. Offset, we're going to calculate based on amplitude. Say that the offset is equal to one minus A. Is based on amplitude of LFO. Let me switch over now and actually just use a lower frequency so it's easier to see. Now let's run this and look at what our LFO looks like. So in this case, when we have an amplitude now of 0 0.25, we've done an offset of one minus 0 0.25. So now that we're going to go from one down to 0 0.5, we can put in any value we want for the depth. How about uh, 25 here and look at what the LFO. No matter what value we put in, as long as it's on a range from zero to 100, we're going to have the offset now correctly so that the LFO peaks at one and then goes down from there. So in this case, by having a lower depth, the effect won't be as dramatic. The strength of it won't be as much. So why don't we now start to apply this to our noise instead of just looking at the LFO. So here, remove this line of code. We can go back to the, using the amplitude modulation, plotting the waveform and listening to it. Save and run the script. Here you can see that the peaks and the valleys are not as dramatic. There's not as much of a difference between the maximum values and the minimum values. We can switch the depth up to other values too. How about uh, 60? Try that. You can see that we're increasing the strength of the effect more. We're going to reach a maximum amount when we go back to 100. So this is the case when we're turning the signal all the way down to zero in this case. So three important steps for creating the depth or intensity. We need to take some value, it's going to range from zero to 100 percent, transform it so that the amplitude at the maximum is 0 0.5 then perform this offset so that we're always reaching a peak of a value of one. Now, if we turn this all the way off to zero, let's think about what we're going to create. If our depth is zero, our amplitude will also be zero. Our offset then is one. So what does our LFO look like? It's actually going to be a straight line of an amplitude of one because our sine wave gets multiplied by zero. So we're just gonna have zero there then our offset is equal to one. So that's how we can actually create the depth to be a value of zero. So those are the basic steps for tremolo. Again, we can put in different frequencies here for the speed or rate. How about we put in a value of six? Then I'll come up here and instead of using our white noise, I'll switch over and we can reuse our acoustic guitar again. Put in a depth value here, 
something uh, reasonable. How about 50? Run the script again and listen to now that we've created a tremolo effect. <laughs> 